territory link text product right over there. So I'm going to leave all that right in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click next. And then I'm going to come down. I'm going to choose slate again as the actual as the actual look and feel over here. So there's slate right over there. And you guys see over here there's slate coming in and slate basically gives it a defined look and feel. And finish. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is once I've actually finished that one, I'm going to go ahead and click run just to look at it and preview it for a moment. And look at that. There's central. So it's grouped into central, north, and south. And I talked about grouping where we take the distinct values and then do some sort of operation on the rows by those distinct values. There's, uh, there's the link text installing report builder. And then there's the actual product. Now, are there some things I can do, though, to make this look better? Like, for example, there's a link text right over there. And look at all this extra space in link text. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to somehow, you know, collapse it just a little bit more, make it look a little more compressed? Let's see how to do that. I'm going to click back on design right now. Now, first thing I'm going to do over there, right? And let me just show you one more thing, too, over here. Let me click run real quick before I do that. Um, there's the total row right over there, right, for link text right over there. Um, so there's the actual total row. And if you notice over here, link text doesn't really need that. Link text doesn't need a total row. So link text has a row over here that it doesn't need. So let me show you how to, how to, how to remove some of that so whenever you get this empty space so that you can just show what you need. So maybe a total over here, but taking away some extra space in here to make the report look more compact. What you do is you come back to design view. Now, what you do is select the cell right over here that's got the extra space. And you see there's linked text, and it's got extra space because of this, because, because it's accommodating a total row right over here inside of the column right next to it. Now, what I'm going to do over there is I'm going to right-click on it. And then what I'm going to do over there is once I right-click, I'm going to click on split cells. Now, notice what it just did. It just gave me two different cells in here this time. So it just gave me two different cells right over there. Okay, now once I actually get those two different cells, watch what I can do. I'm going to hold down on shift and I'm going to highlight this plus I'm going to highlight total right over there. Okay, now once I, once I actually highlight that plus I highlight total, um, I'm going to add one more cell to it by the way. So I'm just going to add, I'm going to add some cells and I'm going to say, you know what, this extra row was not needed. It was added by the wizard, but this is extra formatting. And I want to go ahead and make, you know, I want to go ahead and make this row, um, I want to go ahead and remove this row because I've already got a total row over here. No need to repeat it. So I'm going to right click over here. Then I'm going to come down right over there and I'm going to click on delete rows. Now, if you think about why, think about for just a second over here, link text was included within the grouping, right? But do we need, really need to go ahead and summarize things by some text? Probably not. Probably not. Um, it was more there just to appear in order like this so that it appeared right after territory. So I'm going to click delete row. And now I've altered the wizard. So let me now turn around and actually click run again. And notice what happens. Now there's central. Oh, there we go. There's the link text right over there, installing report builder. And look at that over there. That's a lot more compressed in this particular case. So there we go over here. We can actually see it now. There's our central. There's our there's our there's our extra part. And as opposed to the last time where we had the, all that extra space, we're now a lot more compressed. We now have a big benefit over here. Um, we can also see over here that there's our central again, right? So there's our central data region right over there. And then there's our total right over there for central. So we can actually see that coming right in. So very, very beneficial. And we didn't summarize by link text over here, installing report builder, probably because that was unimportant. So when you need to group by something so that it appears in contiguous rows like that, like that, like that, but you don't want a total, but the auto generator generates a total, use that split column method that we just did. Very, very handy. So now you're getting some skills on how to actually go ahead, go ahead and actually control placement and layout. More skills. Perfect. All right, now, the other thing we need to do is we need to be able to format things. Let's say that we want hyperlinks, right? How do we actually add hyperlinks to our report so that we get some style? Okay, here we go. Let's see that. First thing I want you to do is, or first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to actually, we're going to actually right click on this cell that's got link text. So that selects it all right there. Then what we're going to do over there is we're going to come down to text box properties. Now, in text box properties, there's something called actions. Actions, as you can guess, do things like go somewhere, go to a URL, go to another report, call another report, you name it. For those of you in SharePoint development, these become really important because you'll pass parameters this sort of way also, where you'll click on an action like go to a URL, and then by clicking on go to a URL, it'll pass parameters to something else, like maybe some info path form that pulls up or whatever else. Um, and you can do a lot of 
a lot of things with that to be able to essentially avoid having to program um, to be able to introduce things without any code. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna use and, and I'm gonna use a very common action over here, which is which is which is go to URL. Okay, now I get a select URL box right over here, right? And for that select URL over here, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna tell it link text. So this is the actual URL that the data set would have. So the table is storing this all as HTTP, whatever else you name it. It's storing all those links or HTTPS or whatever else you have. So keep that in mind that somewhere these links are being stored or they're being auto-generated through FX where, where, you actually use a, um, <clears throat> where you actually use an expression. People will do that a lot when they've got parameterized reports. They'll build some sort of link dynamically. We'll get to expressions later on, but extremely powerful though, like I said, um, as you begin to progress through your career, because this is going to allow you to do very, very interactive and very rich um, dynamic functionality um, or, or be able to introduce very rich and, and dynamic functionality without really having to turn around and write, you know, C sharp or VB or whatever, or whatever language you use. Okay, so there we go over there. So I've actually got that part right over there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click OK. All right, now, I'm, now once I click OK, this text doesn't really look any different. Let me click run for a second. So you mean this text, the link text that is, it's got links, but look, I mean, I can click on it, you know, but there's no, there's no real difference over here. It doesn't actually look like, you know, a hyperlink. All right, here's how we do that. Come back to design. Now, what you're going to do on design over here is, um, what you're going to do over here is you're going to first go ahead and highlight this link text. So I can come over here and highlight it. Now, once I highlight, um, once I highlight link text, and there are multiple ways I could have done this one too, I'm going to come down over here and I'm going to say underline. Then what I'm going to do is change the color to blue. So change that color to say blue over here. And now I'll click off of it. Now come back and click run. Now come back over here. And look at this. Now we've actually got now we've actually got hyperlinks here, or at least what looks like hyperlinks. It was already hyperlinks just by hitting the action. So what you've just done over here now is now you've added hyperlinks. All right, excellent. That is very good. Okay, now something else that I talked about that we've done earlier, but we're going to do again just so we can see it again. Um, how do you actually turn around <clears throat> and how do you change things to vertical, right? And for those of you who might be coming in just from this very first lecture, I really recommend going over the other lectures in this series on the playlist that I've got on YouTube. But... It's a good place to learn it. You'll see it over here. And I explained it a lot more inside the earlier tutorials, but I'll explain it over here too. Okay, what we'll oftentimes need to do is rotate text, right? And the reason why we do that is to be able to get a compression in size. That's our main thing. So what I do is I highlight some text just like this. So I highlight territory because that's what I want to rotate. Then, 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 then once I do that, I'm going to come down to the properties tab right over here, which, which, which I would have gotten to by clicking on view and then checking properties right over here. Okay, now... <clears throat> Once I've got my properties tab, it shows some selected text right over here, right? So there's selected text right over there, and it's showing me that, okay, this is the text that we actually selected. Now, what I need to do, though, is I need to actually highlight the full text box because I'm going to tell this text box that whatever's in there, in other words, whatever, whatever value gets written in there, I want you to take and I want you to switch and rotate vertically, which means rotate 270 degrees. So let me just click back over here, click off. And I could just right click, that selects it. There we go. Or left click, that also selects it. You guys can see over here. And then I'm gonna come down, come down, come down, come down, come down, come down. And what I'm looking for over here is I'm looking for, I'm looking for something called writing mode, which is right over here. There's writing mode right over there. Now for writing mode, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna change it and essentially, notice how you can have it write horizontal, vertical, or just rotate it 270 degrees, which introduces a 270 degree rotation. So I'll click rotate 270. And now that I'm finished with that, I'm going to come back up. Come back up and on the home tab now, I'm going to go ahead and click run. Notice what's happened over here. Now it's much more compressed. What I've done is I'm not using nearly as much space anymore over here. So I can shorten this column because I can shorten the width of this column. And again, shortening with the columns will become very handy for you, especially as your users begin to request more and more columns per page for printing out. So this is extremely beneficial to be able to do. 
and understand for that particular reason. So we see how that's being done at this point. All right, now that's really handy, it is. But there is one more nugget here that I really like. Let me click design. And what we're gonna do over here in design is we're gonna actually add HTML this time. So very nice over here to be able to add some HTML. So what I'm gonna do now is first, I'm gonna click on insert. So this is how you do it. And then inside of insert, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a text box. Drag it underneath the table. There we go. And when I drag it underneath the table over here, I'm gonna go ahead and make it a sufficient size for being able to show me some XML or some, I'm sorry, not, not, not XML, but HTML. So it'll appear right underneath the table in this case. And like I said, it could appear above it, you name it. So we see that over here and we see our text box coming in. I'm just making it a little bit of, a little bit, si I'm, I'm just sizing it a little bit over here. So I'll make it about, let's say three inches tall. So starting over here, go down, go down, go down, somewhere in there. And let's say I started over here, so that would be one, that would be two. Oh, that's that's enough. I think this is enough right here. Almost two. I didn't quite make it all the way as three inches.